Welcome back to the Jester's Court. And joining us at Walk-Ons this week are the Jester's Boys U13 players. And we are glad they're here. And a few of them will have questions for the coach in just a moment. But I have a question for you. Those kids are at an age now where they're thinking about a future in soccer. And there are a lot of different ways in this country to move forward. But you think the way you guys do it through your academy is the best way to get kids thinking of their future in the right way. Well, I'm glad you asked me the question because it is prevalent and that we've got clubs that promise just about everything and associations that you know say they can get your kid and it, I know what it's about I've been there I've done it I, I mean when I first started in coaching 20 odd years ago I ran Lafreniere Soccer Association I've seen it all before what it is is about an education for kids that they can play whether the best athlete not the best athlete and when they do, and they get into that freshman, sophomore year, is that's when you help them to identify. A lot of the work they have to do themselves is they really want to move on to a college level, but they have to have an education in the game. They have to be soccer players. Good athlete, not good athlete, they have to be good soccer players. And what happens is across the country is everybody's selling the same old line, and it, honestly, I can't take it anymore. I just can't take it anymore. And, and it, it, it's the same old line, and I, I feel sorry for parents because they go for it. Get into a place where someone truly wants to educate your kid how to play the game and they can go a long, long way. And you guys feel like you guys are And that's what that we way. build our yeah. academy around. We're not telling lies to anybody. We're not, well, I hate to say that word. We're not really, we're, 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 we're trying to prepare them correctly that if they actually want it, then it becomes a partnership with the player. It's not like some big tournament somewhere where some, a bunch of college coaches are going to go and find your player. That's all crap. And uh, I hate to say that word, but it is. And, and it, I understand why parents go for the, you know, for the, for the shiny rapper, but it's not what the way it is. It right. truly isn't, right. you know? Well, you guys are doing it the right way, and we've got some of these fine young players who are ready to fire some questions at Coach Farrell. It's Ask the Coach, and it's time for our first question. Hello, my name is Jordan, and I play for the New Orleans Jesters Academy team, and I'd like to ask Coach Kenny, how does the recruitment process work for the NPSL first team Jesters? Yeah, so good question. Like, it, it, Jordan's been with us since he left Carrollton Boosters at 10 years old. He was training there, and uh, he's been committed to the process, so I'm committed to him to be, I would hope, our NPSL goalkeeper like when he gets there so if he keeps working at his game right now and he's 13 going on 14 and we can move him into our reserves when he's 16 17 and now he starts playing with adults as well as the youth and then he moves into the NPSL team as a reserve maybe third string before he goes to college and I move him up that is the way to get a profile that is the way to separate yourself from everybody else that's a vessel of development that nobody else can offer, very few others can offer, maybe some others can. And then what you say is then you get on the phone, then you talk to the colleges, then you talk to professional teams. If he is still that committed and still working as hard at that point as he is now with that you know, direction in mind, then we can help him. Instead of being common with someone that's just in a notion of players that across the nation that's trying to find a way and that is kind of, kind of actually it kind of, you know it's like what I just talked about it's like so so yes that's the way to go and um, you know we're invested in him he's invested in us and I I dream of him being our starting goalkeeper in the NPSL and I promise you we did not plant him as the first no. question he was the perfect segue no, no, no. to what you just talked no, absolutely. about absolutely but, but, it, but it's true it's from the heart I believe this stuff you know well we got more questions from our audience Hi, my name is Zachary, and I play for the New Orleans Jesters Academy, and I would like to know, what's the biggest thing to keep in mind when transitioning from the academy team to the first team, bigger Jesters? Yeah, great question from Zach, who, uh, who's, when, he, when Zach was younger with us, extremely intelligent, and, and his body had not caught up with his intelligent level in my, you know, so I could see that he could see the game, but he couldn't get there quick enough to do the things that I thought he could do. So patience, his commitment to it, brought him through to a new level and this 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 kid is a great player so his question was you know what he does he focuses on fitness he focuses on learning the game as much as he can around the world and then what he does is he positions himself just like Jordan to move into the next level with us and he has every chance in the world and you know it goes back to again I'll bring it back to what I said earlier 
Zach may not have been picked by the best team, supposedly the best team, you know, the best athletes, but he's going to be one of the better players because he's doing it in an educational manner. And what he needs to do is focus, look at, look, look at players that are similar to him around the world and what they do, start to emulate them, start to focus on learning, which he's very good at learning, and then start to push, position himself going forward and becoming invaluable. And, and, and within the system, it's going to work for him. And we, we really, I mean, I'm really, really glad that he's doing as well as he is. I can tell you that. Time to go uh, interactive social media, and this is uh, from our Twitter handle, Ask Coach Farrell, which you can ask a question any week to Coach Farrell. This is from at Seinpez, who says, congrats on your new daughter. How has <laughs> fatherhood changed you as a coach? Or has <laughs> as far as being a father's concerned, I did it at 53 years old, my first child. I couldn't have made it better. I just can't tell you. I, I, it's inexplicable the, the feeling that you have for your wife and for your child every day that you wake up. And, but what it does do is it makes sure that you try and do the best job you can because you have the family behind you. So I don't know what to say except it's absolutely awesome. As a coach, I don't think it's changed me much, but uh, I would recommend it to anybody. <laughs> well, we saw a little video of her, and every parent thinks their kid is the cutest. This girl is an absolute princess. I mean, and so adorable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, tremendous. All right, we got another question from one of our uh, U13 players. Hi, I'm uh, Jude Miklinchek from the 0203 Jester's Academy team. And uh, my question for Coach Kenny is, how difficult is it to make the NPSL first Jester's team? Okay, so how difficult? Extremely difficult, but you're in the right place. You're in a better place than anybody else to make it. My long-term goal at, the, at this level, at the NPSL level, is to have a team that can compete nationally for a national championship or you know, be in the final with completely local players. It's all we've always set out to do that. So at this level, we're at the top you know, amateur league in the country. So it's very difficult. You've got to stay focused. They'll have different challenges when they move out of middle school to high school. It's how disciplined and how focused can they stay. We've built a, an avenue, as I said, for people to continue through. It will be the challenges outside of that. If they continue to play, continue to you know, execute their skill quicker and quicker all the time, learn tactically, make quicker decision, you know, quicker decision making process, th they can get there. But it's not easy. They've got to want it bad enough. And they've got to make their everyday decisions outside of school about I want to be there. So what do I do to get there? You know, but they're in, the, they're in the best place they can be right now. Absolutely. We got time for one more question, so let's have at it. Hello, my name is Brennan Fulce, and I play for the New Orleans Jesters Academy squad. And I have another question for Coach Kenny. My question is, why do most uh, strikers take PKs and normally miss them when, when midfielders and defenders can have a chance at taking them? No, so it's a good question. It's like, you know, so who takes a penalty? Who takes a PK? Well, generally, strikers want to score goals badly, and they think about the various ways they can score goals and various ways they can strike the ball. Midfielders are looking to be either creative or how they cut stuff out, and defenders are looking to clear balls and get other players into the game. So at the end of the day, a defender can be a great penalty taker, but it's what a striker probably brings to the table is... They live off scoring goals, and there's no better opportunity than a penalty to score a goal. So it kind of, they bring that little bit of arrogance and attitude, and they feel they have. So you're kind of confident they're always going to score for you. That's the answer. But the, the real answer is, you know, you know, the best players that strike a ball with the calmest attitude and put it in the back of the net, I mean, should be taking penalties.